Peregrine Took, better known as Pippin. He was another of the legendary Nine Walkers of the Fellowship of the Ring, and today we look at his full story. First things first, do not forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you can join the ever-growing Bro Hero. Our beloved Peregrine Two was the youngest of the four halflings, being born in 2990 of the Third Age. While we know Mary was once able to glimpse Bilbo turn invisible and watch until he reappeared, Pippin was less aware of many of the things going on around him, albeit maybe because he was younger. He is by no means a complete fool though and he was still part of the conspiracy group keeping a close eye on our Frodo Baggins. But what more is there to Pippin than most of us already know? Let's look at his full story now. And Peregrine took. I might have known. As mentioned, Pippin was born in 2990 of the Third Age, and this was to his parents of Paladin and Eglantine took. The hair on his head and legs, which were especially hairy even for a hobbit, were almost golden and curly. Pippin would have three sisters, Pearl, Pimpernel, and Pavinka, all of whom were older than him. However, being the only boy of Paladin, this meant Peregrine was his heir and therefore would one day get the title of Thane of the Shire, of which Paladin was the 31st of these. Growing up, Pippin would embrace his mischievous side. He grew up being great friends with Frodo Baggins and Meriadoc Brandybuck, as all three of them were descended from the old Took, and especially he and Merry enjoyed their times wandering the Marish in the East Farthing, visiting Farmer Maggot, as well as having a good drink and a pipe when possible too. There is not really much else known of Pippin's earliest years, as he seemed to just enjoy being a hobbit before coming of age. However, saying that, he would not even come of age being 33 for a hobbit until the year after returning to the Shire. But that is of course just jumping ahead a little bit too much, so let's move on to some times now that we are all a bit more familiar with, however movie fans may not know the true story. Pippin would attend Bilbo's leaving party, but would only be an 11 year old youngling at this time, so it takes a few years later before he becomes a bit more involved. When Frodo begins to act mysterious, Pippin is party to this conspiracy, with the eavesdropping and double dealing Samwise Gamgee, and of course Merry and Fatty too. The lovable Pippin calls to mind the way we hear Bilbo describing hobbits, their character and characteristics, and it is perhaps we have a representative of the Shire and its smug, blissful lack of knowing or being known by the rather large and rather dangerous world beyond its borders. But what the film conveys as somewhat idyllic, somewhat like a slice of Eden, an ideal for what is good and wholesome is, in the book, shown to be more perhaps smug and indifferent, the generation of whom Bilbo was to come and shake up. Bilbo's transformation from the events that comprised The Hobbit made him a local legend, and the rumours of his wealth and strange goings on inspire a new generation. A generation of young hobbits whose attitudes towards Bilbo looks more like admiration and intrigue, not the world beyond gossipy, rumour mongering and isolationism young and particular hobbits who comprise the greater fellowship of the ring through our story. You can see how Peregrine is one of those slightly different hobbits than those that came before him. But being the youngest of the four sets him certain disadvantages, not least of all being that he is of course sometimes being a fool of a took. Despite this, just as we have Frodo and Sam being heroic in spite of their shortcomings, so will Pippin come to play his role with bravery, courage and honour. At the beginning of the mission to destroy the ring, he was smaller than the rest of the hobbits because really he was the youngest. Frodo being 50, Sam being 38, Merry being 36, and of course Pippin was just 28. Peregrine Pippin Took agreed to accompany Frodo on his journey to Rivendell, being in the year 3018 of the Third Age, and be the first of the hobbits to complain of tiredness and hunger before even leaving the Greater Shire. He would be present as they pass through Bucklebury and meet the High Elves which were led by Gildor, a great honour that he respected. And despite the Nazgul being on their tails, Pippin still wished to stop for a good drink at the Golden Perch at Stock, but 
he was outvoted here. After reaching Buckland, he revealed himself to be one of the conspirators, and he refused to let Frodo go on without him. His Took blood was definitely coming out strong here. This is where the hobbits then enter the Old Forest, with Pippin getting caught by Old Man Willow, before being rescued by a certain yellow-booted Tom Bombadil. Pippin very much enjoyed his time at Tom's house, and when they left, he was one of the falls as the group were then caught by the Barrow Whites, with Tom having to come to their rescue again. However, thanks to the bright blue jacketed Tom, the four hobbits did eventually make it to Bree and the Prancing Pony, where he discovered it comes in paints. Oh. Pippin would continue in the group with their new mysterious friend, Strider. He would be present at Weathertop and make it to Rivendell with the others, albeit without any real actions of note. When it came time for the Council of Alrond, Pippin would be included among the Fellowship of the Ring at the insistence of Gandalf and this was a great relief to both he and Merry, as they feared they would be left behind and able to assist their friend on his quest. After leaving Rivendell, Pippin would remain in the background until Moria, and he didn't make himself noticed for the best reasons here either. Firstly, if you wish to know, I will tell you that these doors open outwards. From the inside you may thrust them open with your hands, from the outside nothing will move them save the spell of command, they cannot be forced inwards. What are you going to do then? asked Pippin, undaunted by the wizard's bristling brows. Knock on the doors with your head, Peregrine Took, said Gandalf, but if that does not shatter them, and I am allowed a little peace from foolish questions, I will seek for the opening words. And then from there, when inside, Pippin drops a stone down a well that of course leads to the drums in the deep, and then the legendary line of Fool of a Took. From there though, the Fellowship, minus a Balrog slaying Gandalf, leave Moria and make their way to Lothlorien. Here Pippin receives the same gift from Galadriel as Merry does. Small silver belts, each with a clasp wrought like a golden flower. And then they continue on down the Anduin from here until reaching near the Falls of Rauros. This is where the Fellowship breaks. Boromir is slain, and Pippin is captured by the travelling orcs and Urukai, along with Merry. It is here though, that Pippin shows some initiative, and perhaps there are some brains inside of that head. He pushed the dead orc to one side, and then hardly daring to breathe, he drew the knot of the wrist cord up and down against the blade of the knife. It was sharp, and the dead hand held it fast. The cord was cut. Quickly, Pippin took it in his fingers and knotted it again into a loose bracelet of two loops and slipped it over his hands. Then he lay very still. It wasn't just this though, he left his elven brooch on the ground to help the three hunters in their pursuit, far less foolish than he had once been. When the Rohirrim attacked, Merry and Pippin were able to escape from Grishnak the Orc and into Fangorn Forest, where here they met Treebeard the Ent. Treebeard, Merry and Pippin have a good connection, and so when the Ents decide to march, Merry and Pippin go with them and witness firsthand the defeat of Saruman and Isengard. Pippin would enjoy his reunion with the three hunters, Gandalf, and meeting King Theoden too, but their pipe smoking and hearty meals could not last too long. Pippin was the one who then picked up the palantir that Wormtongue had thrown from the Tower of Isengard, and this kindled a curious fire in Pippin's heart that he could not put out. This came to the point that he stole it from a sleeping Gandalf, just so he could gaze into it once again. At first the globe was dark black as jet, with the moonlight gleaming on its surface. Then there came a faint glow and stir in the heart of it, and it held his eyes, so that now he could not look away. Soon all the inside seemed on fire, the ball was spinning, or the lights within were revolving. Suddenly the lights went out, he gave a gasp and struggled, but he remained bent, clasping the ball with both hands. Closer and closer he bent, and then became rigid, his lips moved soundlessly for a while. Then, with a strangled cry, he fell back and lay still. The cry was piercing. The guards leapt down from the banks. All the camp was soon astir. Sauron had seen Pippin. He believed he had the ring. However, he also believed that he was with Saruman because of where the message came from. War was coming, fast. Gandalf thought thereafter it was best to take Pippin to Gondor, where he became full of emotion at the mention of Boromir's death and swore fidelity to Boromir's father, the reigning steward of Gondor, Denethor II, becoming a guard of the citadel. 
The people of Gondor were shocked with how Pippin addressed the steward, as the way he spoke came across very informal, and this led to other soldiers to think he must come from a very important family back in his homelands, far less of a full reputation that he had previously held. Pippin would also become good friends with a soldier of Gondor named Beragond, and his son too, Burgil, and this friendship would be essential when it came time to save a wounded Faramir being burnt alive by his mentally broken father. Beragond held off the guards while Gandalf saved the day, all thanks to Pippin. Guard of the Citadel indeed. Once the Siege of Minas Tirith had been won, Pippin went and found his best friend Merry wandering the streets after having his wounds overlooked because of his small size, and so he took him to the Houses of Healing to be looked after. Size matters not though. It is not the size of the hobbit in the fight which matters, but the size of the fight within that hobbit's heart which will come to the fore over and over again. This came to be even more apparent when the forces of good marched and took part in the Battle of the Moranon. During the final negotiations with the Herald of Sauron, Gandalf instructed those representatives of each race opposed to Sauron who were present to be at the negotiations. This included Gimli for the Dwarves, Legolas, Eladan, and Alrohir from the Elves, and Pippin from the Hobbits. But when the battle started here, Pippin would repay the favour to Baragond, saving his life by slaying a troll. Another mighty feat in the life of Pippin. And it was then in fact that it was Gimli who saved him from being crushed by that very troll's dead body too. Almost an awful end for our mighty hobbit. With the war now over, Pippin witnessed the crowning of that once mysterious stranger in the prancing pony as King Elisar of the reunited kingdom of Gondor and Arnor, and shortly after, he and the other hobbits would return home to the Shire. But it was not a peaceful return that they came back to. No, the Shire had been overtaken by a disgraced Saruman going by the name of Sharky and his ruffians too. However, this would not stop Master Peregrine after everything else that he had been through. No chance. Pippin went back to Tukland and raised an army of a hundred hobbits to go and fight in the Battle of Bywater. Pippin, along with Merry, led the hobbits to victory and their names became etched in the folklore of the Shire. Heroes they were. A legend Pippin was. No fool of a Took anymore. Despite having returned to the Shire, Pippin was still a Knight of Gondor, and as he returned far taller than when he left thanks to the end draft, in fact, he and Merry were the tallest hobbits ever in Shire Records, he was only ever held in the highest of regards from this point on. Pippin would go on to marry Diamond of Longcleave, and together they would have a son named Faramir. As more time passed too, Pippin would come to inherit the title of Thane of the Shire after succeeding his father, becoming the 32nd Thane. And along with this, alongside of Sam and Merry, he was made a Councillor of the Northern Kingdom by King Aragorn. As Pippin grew older, he collected more and more historical information on the histories of Numenor and the heirs of Elendil, and this was all kept at the Great Smiles, being the ancestral home and many tunnelled mansion of the Took family in Tuckborough, in the west farthing of the Shire. He would go on to live a peaceful life for a good time, and once he reached 50 years as Thane, it was time to move on. He and Merry passed on their titles, possessions, and memories to their sons, and left the Shire to spend some time in Rohan before moving on to Gondor too. It would be here that eventually the two hobbits would pass on, although the exact year of the deaths is unknown. The bodies of both hobbits would be laid in Rathdinan, where the great of Gondor were laid to rest, and when Aragorn himself passed in 120 of the Fourth Age, the bodies of both hobbits were laid to rest next to his. Anything but a foolish honour. <laughs> so there we have it. At the beginning of the mission to destroy the ring, Pippin was the smallest and youngest hobbit. He may have been somewhat of a fool at times, but at the end of all things, when all cards had been placed on the table, Pippin grew to the highest heights and made everyone proud of his achievements. He may have kicked off the drums in the deep and looked into the Palantir, but without him, the Ents may never have marched. Faramir would have been burnt alive, Beragond would have been killed, and the Shire may never have managed to push back against Saruman. A Thane of the Shire, a guard of the Citadel, a Knight of Gondor, but above all things, a fool no more. With that now though, it is time for my question of the day, which is, do you think Pippin of the books or Pippin of the Peter Jackson movies is the greater Pippin? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section down below.
And now to shout out our patrons. You guys have been incredible in supporting our short film, and we cannot thank you enough. We have the Divine Power tier members of Kevin and Abram, the Fire Demon tier members of Nasheed and Gregory, and the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, Jennifer, Hunter, and David too. Every single one of you is a true legend of the Brohirim. Finally, if you have managed to reach the end of the video with me today and you are enjoying what you see on the channel, please hit that subscribe button with the bell icon too so that you can be notified of all future uploads. And so, thank you for spending just some of your time with me today and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.